Good weekend all. I Rapstein with your metals market wrap up and this is your weekend edition of metals for Friday and this is the 8th of November 2019. We're just after 345 in the afternoon here. So the markets, these are not the settlement prices. They're going to be right in this area. The market took a beating in the risk off areas. In other words, people that were betting something's not going to happen good between China and the U.S. all of a sudden saw the metals come down on them. Silver and gold got hit very hard. You're looking at interest rates have soared. They're still doing it. Even with today trying to get short covering, it didn't do it. The market is betting, very simple, that the tariff situation between the U.S. and China is going to go in phases and be slowly taken off. If you think the president, when he said today, uh, no, he hasn't agreed to take off any tariffs, should have said anything different, I disagree. And the reason I disagree is because in May, we thought that we were at a point where we had agreements on many parts of the trade deal. And I remember, I think it was uh, Vice Premier Liu had said, no, until a deal's not all done, then all the other parts aren't done. Well, gee, now I'm President Trump. Okay. You get that one shot, now here's the shot again. I'm not exactly without a brain here, and I'm saying to myself, you know something? Let's get it all on a piece of paper, and until it, I'm not agreeing on parts of what you want to do in public. Privately, I bet that there's a different story going on. Publicly, no. I think he's right to hold the Chinese feet to the fire, make him do the phase one deal, whatever he decides is right. That doesn't mean I'm right on what I'm saying. It's what I think is going on. Now remember, on these weekend editions, what I cover with you first is a monthly chart, one of them, and then we go into all weekly charts because we're looking for the bigger picture. So when we look at a monthly chart, let me tell you the, what happens on this chart in a negative. What we did is the market had been going sideways, and this was as of May 31st, so I'm taking you back in time. The market makes its first surge the first week of June, well, a month of June, I say week, it's a monthly chart, right here. Now, when you come out of sideways action, it's not unusual to push the market because you've captured a group of people short. If it were to the downside, you caught them long. And what the market was doing was running, and all of a sudden, October 31st, we got a warning sign as the market started pulling back. Now, it actually began right here. It began as I consider it September. The market started pulling back, but there's nothing wrong with that. I'd be keeping my eye on momentum. Momentum is still good. It hasn't turned down. Momentum here starts gradually giving a warning side. This is now in November. The month is not over. I don't know where we're at on this. The, what I can tell you is on a monthly chart, and trading off a monthly is not easy, you've got higher lows, higher highs. 14.5830 right here, I want to come that, was last month's low. Will we close under that or not is going to be a big question that I have at the end of the month. We're only November 8th, but that's where you're at. Support levels are back at the 1350. I am not saying they're going there. I'm just telling you where the support is. The resistance is 1543. Now we get to a more interesting chart. This is a weekly chart of just closes. And you haven't had since May a close under the 18-week moving average. You've had corrections, and you know that I've pointed out on the other charts here that we're in a correction mode, especially on the daily. Now what happened is this week you close under it. So suddenly you've changed the bias of the market. It is down on the weekly charts. When we take a look at the pattern that you have right here, the first thing I'm looking at is the sideways action of the pattern, and that's pretty much sideways to me. You peaked out here, you came down, and you're just marching around. But the swing line tells you a different story. The swing line is saying you don't have a trend. You have a higher high, lower low pattern. I don't see a trend. I see a market that is trying to break down, got under the 18-week average, if we look back at the Bollinger Band, this didn't stop the market just now. It sort of fell on its own from here and supports back at 14, 14, 50. If from here to get there is forty dollars, it's not out of the question. Where else is the battle? The 18-week average of closes. I wouldn't be surprised if the market wants to play at that number at some point. Momentum 
down. So you have a market that has changed itself this week. The bias has turned down. The potential is there for the lower Bollinger Band. Momentum is down. I don't see a trend. I see a market that caught a group and the market's coming down here. I went to GLD. Does that tell me any story? It's identical. I've got the higher, high, lower, and low momentum pointing down, bias down. I look at GDX, different story, bearish. Lower highs, and we can even take away this week. Lower lows, lower highs. Now, 27.83 was the 18-week moving average of closes at the end of last week. You took out this week's low, you're under it. That puts in the play the potential for the first support at 25.79. Resistance, 27.87, as I see it on the chart. But let me come back to that. What you wouldn't want to see if you're bearish on this market is 28.18 taken out. That would break the pattern that began all the way up here at the lower highs and lower lows in the market. The gold-silver ratio, in order to maintain, I think, a bullish overall market, you need silver, typically, to be gaining on the gold market. That's how, if you go back and you study the gold-silver ratio, you'll see that more times than not. And it was doing that. Now, what you don't want to see is all this taken out, and it did it in one swoop. I mean, it just went nuts this week, and that was that monster break in the silver market. So now you're back to a zone where the market might stall out. That's what I'm saying. 86.35 is that number. You finished 87.01, but you've come from 83.72. Can the market just go? It certainly could, but I wouldn't be surprised if you get a bit of a stall here. As for silver, let's take off this week. On silver, when we came into the week, you had higher lows, higher highs. This chart was looking better than the gold market. What you don't want to see is this low taken out. That would be the problem in the market. And that number would be, just so we look at it, 1718, because it would break the pattern of higher lows, higher highs. We already had a, a mini correction right through here. And like the gold and the other, we had sideways action broke out to the upside. This was a phenomenal run to the upside. And now the question is, what does it do? It's moving itself. You can see there's the number. And this week's an outside week down. That was the disaster week. So going home, the market's bearish. Lower highs, lower lows. You're underneath the 18-week average. The bias down, momentum pointing down. So until this week's high of 1823 is taken out, I think the bears wrestled control of the market. In the copper market, we have a market that is one of those, what I like to use the term, ugly chart. And that starts when you have an outside week down and you take out that high. Now the first objective is the closest of a moving average or a Bollinger Band. In this case it's the 18 week average. And the market just sort of hung there. It hit it again on this week. It hit it right into this area there and then it moved up and now the question is what's it going to do? You wouldn't know it because copper's down 400 points on the close today, but for the week it's up 350 points. What is the pattern? I don't have one. It is not higher lows, higher highs because of what it did here. So I call it an ugly pattern and I don't know. In the platinum market, the pullback fell right back to the 18-week average. So while the daily charts are certainly got hit and hit hard, you have to take out on this chart to negate the bullishness of this market, the 879 level right here, because it gives you the higher lows, higher highs. And as you can see, the market finished at 889.90. So can the bulls rescue it? Well, momentum, which leads price often, is saying it's turned down. On the close, you have the bias down because you closed under the 18-week average. What the bulls have to do, in my opinion, is support it there. If they don't, then the 871.40 becomes the next uh, support level. Palladium. The daily charts look like a top. The weekly charts don't. On the weekly, you still have the pattern of higher lows, higher highs. Momentum has not turned down. You haven't taken out a previous break low. So is it a top or is it just a severe correction? Because you were down about $60 today. But on the longer term chart, this is still pointing to the upside. Then we get to the dollar. And my argument on the dollar is, what, what is it? 
it keeps going either side of this 18 week average, but it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, and for a while it was going up to the Bollinger Band. Does it have that power again? I don't know. I've got the swing line down with lower highs, lower lows. I have the momentum up and the settlement was over the 18 week average, so the bias is up. I'll stay neutral on the weekly chart. The daily chart is certainly in the uh, bull camp, but it's up to the upper Bollinger Band and that's one of the resistance zones. By the way, this is how the news, if you get our charting software, and I wanted to show you that, comes in. And I, you set your own tabs for what you want the news to do, and you can get news flowing all day long. I find it very, very good for what I do. Uh, I want to remind you, I have different levels of research. What you get on YouTube, that's the free level. Once you get into the other commentaries that I write, the trade recommendations, the morning subscriber videos, you find out about all this by going to our website at www.irapstein.com under the word research. My morning video is chock full of a great way to start and then if you want to add to that, that's fine, but you'll see an awful lot in it. And I cover these markets, many more of them each morning. The research is intentionally not expensive. Your introductory price is $7.95 for the first 30 days. Then you can either do a one year for $13 every 30 days, but you pay a year up front, or you can go to $15 a month. You can get my research only, just the commentary, $25, my written commentary, or you can get my written commentary, my written trade recommendations, the video, and that's about $40 a month if you have a trading account with us, 60 if you don't. All of them include this. And this is our phone app. And why? Whatever I do, I push out. I don't, I don't believe in sending you a text message. It costs you money. Let's understand that. So it's just as easy to give you a free app if you're a subscriber of mine. When it comes in, you look at it, you hit it, and it lights up right on your phone for you. It's also going to include everything you just saw, charts if you want to put them, studies if you want to put them on them. They're going to be there in a way that you can use them along with the news you just saw me putting up there. I'm I. Rapstein. Go to our website under the word research. You can see what it's about. You can click up here if you're watching me on YouTube. And you have a great weekend. I'll see you all Monday. It is Veterans Day, but we're open. You have a good day.